The shovel was cold and wet from the light drizzle of rain coming down. How very fitting. I saw a young man off by himself. He was torn up by something pretty fierce. I came up to him and said, Young man, are you the father? And he said, I am, fighting through his tears as well as the skies. You seem like a fine young man, not to pry, especially with the ceremony. But why are you all alone? He simply replied, They don't know my pain, so I have nothing to say to them. At first, I found this rather frustrating. A man in such need of bolstering, but shoves everyone else away. Well, I said, I will leave you to your process then. Sorry to bother you, mister. Then the man sprang up and exclaimed, Wait, I didn't want you to leave. But why? I haven't lost a child, just like anyone else here. The man grew serious. How many years have you been here? I know it's been quite a long time. You've dug countless graves. You've seen death's face for decades. Has that ever wore you down? Without even having to think. Of course it has. The elderly, babies, middle-aged, doesn't matter. It's all sad. Every once in a while, I cry as I lay in bed. I like to think it's some kind of sympathy for those I had to lay dirt over, and their families. I've lost many of friends and family in my day. Buried a lot of them, too. You get used to it a little, but never fully numb to the pain. The man had a small smile on his face. I began to grow a little nervous. A young man smiling when he should be crying is either a really good thing, or a bomb waiting to explode. He hung his head, his face slowly losing hold to the smile it once had. Yesterday. I could swear the air got colder as he began to speak. I was getting things prepared for today. I was making these little treats my daughter so dearly enjoyed. Every day she wanted one. But of course, gotta be a good parent. Who am I kidding? She ate those every single day, because I love seeing her smile too much. I was making the treats, and I stopped. I stared at them. I don't know how long for. But I smashed every single one of them, threw them across the kitchen, and screamed until my throat was raw. Okay, so maybe this is one of those bomb-waiting-to-explode times. I held my shovel a little tighter. He continued. This morning, I cried. I cried for hours. I cried more than I didn't cry. They say that a man isn't supposed to cry. Well then, I guess I'll just be the mother too then. <laughs> he had a very tiny chuckle before snapping back to the weight of his memories. I started crying so hard I was yelling at the same time. I was mad. I was angry. Why did God let this happen? A benevolent and loving God would make me know something so beautiful so that he could take her away so quickly? What, is this a delivery service? Oops, your package went to the wrong house? He slammed his fist on the stone bench beneath him. I know that had to hurt. I could see the twinge of pain he was trying to cover up, saving the last bit of composure he had. I'm sorry, God. He whispered, looking to the sky. Looking back at me, he continued. You should have seen her. She had her mother's eyes and hair. An angel, I tell you. Too bad she had my genetics to bring her down a couple points. A small smile returned to his face just for it to leave as quickly as it came. I interjected. I know you're down, mister, but that's no way to talk about yourself. I mean this in the most cordial of ways, but I'd say she was all the better for having a bit of you, be a bit of her. Even she got after me for saying stuff like that. I don't know if she even knew what she was saying, but I like to believe she did. There was a small moment of silence, the raindrops danced, bouncing off the stones and trees. 
You would have thought they owned the place with such reckless behavior. No care for the morning, no care for those that passed on, simply carrying on with their self-centered selves. My cohort is probably wondering why he's having to do all the work alone. Eh, he can deal with it. A day of hard work would do him good anyhow. I finally broke the silence. I don't know if it was my place to, but frankly, I couldn't take it anymore. So, uh, do you have any family you can be around? Yeah, but I don't want to be with them. Aunt Janet is going to talk about her pets, thinking that will cheer everyone up. It won't, save for a couple of cousins and another aunt. Uncle Henry will latch on to someone, Lord help them, and talk about his hobby of the week. You want to hear about painting and painting supplies for three hours? I shook my head in horror. Didn't think so. Basically, I can't talk to them about this. Sure, they just want to help, but... I need closure. Not stories of when I was a kid. I sat there, dumbfounded as to what to say. Sure. I've seen more death than anyone that's been in this cemetery today, but I can't say I've worn shoes that were anywhere like his. I think he saw the struggling look on my face, because he simply said, This is why I'm talking to you. You're the closest to understanding, and you aren't trying to force me to feel better. Some encouraging word, sure. But trying to make me feel better when you don't understand? That you haven't done. Thank you, sir, for your time. I only nodded and walked away. You know, we really lost dramatic scenes like this when they started using machines to dig the graves.